Welcome back, CCU. We are diving right into the second semester with CCU TV's first episode of season five. Hello Cougars, I'm Tammy Bruneman and I'm Haley Novacek. This is CCU TV and we are so happy to welcome you all to the second semester of this year. During the first few weeks of the semester, we all have had so much on our plate, but CCU is doing all they can to provide us with the best support. CCU IT team is here to help. During the beginning of the semester, IT makes themselves available in the pre-note to help you connect to the internet, clean up your hard drive, or help you set up a program. Be sure to take advantage of our IT team before they're gone. Who knows with CCU's Wi-Fi. And speaking of brilliant individuals, swarms of nervous and anxiety-stricken high school seniors once again appeared on CCU's campus in January. Each year, around the end of January, CCU hosts the rigorous scholarship competition, World Changers. The event is open to all high school seniors whose ACT scores and GPA qualify them for a chance at earning a full-ride scholarship. Various types of interviews and group activities narrow down the search for the top three winners. Though most may not receive the coveted scholarship, the experience alone is a priceless gift. One, don't freak out too much, you'll be okay. Two, yes, feels hurt, but you'll be fine. And three, just be who you are. And so, it, don't stress out about the interviews or about trying to be somebody else, like you said, because Everyone is worried, everyone is concerned about who you are and there's no stress involved with that. You don't have to put up a front because... After an intense two-day competition, these potential CCU students now wait upon a phone call that will tell them the result of their efforts. I know a few of the past world changers are doing wonderful work with the Centennial Institute. Wonderful. Well, on our first day back to school, Centennial Institute hosted the first issue Monday Forum of the semester. The speaker was Kristen Hawkins, president of the Student for Life of America. Attendees included Little Sisters of the Poor and Jeff Hunt's seven-year-old daughter, Taylor, who was born prematurely. 53% wow. of millennials, so that was 18 to 31-year-olds, 53% said that they believed abortion should be banned in almost every single case, in all or most cases, rape, incest, life, the mother being the three exceptions. That is huge. For a long time, we've been winning on the morality question in our country. Do you think abortion's moral? Do you think abortion's right or wrong? We've been winning on that issue. But where we always lost was on that legality question. Do you think it should be illegal? Do you think it should be banned? Our generation actually thinks it should be banned. The next issue Monday will feature our own Michael Plato speaking on transgenderism and the abolition of man in Laprino 170 at 7 p.m. on February 13th. Now we go straight to Ellen for something political. History is being made before our eyes, like it or not. I'm Ellen Densmore and this is Something Political. President Donald Trump. It happened. Inauguration Day protests in Washington, D.C. and other major cities lived up to some people's expectations. Trump's Twitter, however, was not easily provoked. Trump's inauguration ceremony was true to tradition in many ways, but it set a record for most prayers at any presidential inauguration. Six clergy offered invocations and benedictions in the ceremony, including Franklin Graham. Trump's historic and inclusive clergy choices also included the first Hispanic and Assemblies of God minister, the first rabbi, and the first female faith leader ever to take the microphone during inauguration festivities. When he took the oath of office, Trump laid his hand on not one, but two Bibles, the historic Lincoln Bible and a family Bible. Hold on to your hats. Donald Trump has broken even more records, and the First Lady Melania also makes history in many respects. But you'll have to visit our YouTube channel to get the full story. For now, back to Haley and Tammy in studio. 
Wow, Ella, that was really interesting. And speaking of presidential inaugurations, what's going on here at CCU? Yes, so the second semester has been kicked off by President Sweeting's 30 Days of Prayer initiative. And here's Hannah to tell us more. In preparation for the inauguration of Dr. Sweeting as the new CCU president on February 16th, the 30 Days of Prayer movement is being recognized by staff, students, and administration. I think it's so cool that uh, President Sweeting wanted to do something that involved prayer in his whole inaugural process and just becoming the new president of our school. I think that that's a really unique type of thing that you don't see from a lot of people in leadership positions in the sense of like going for prayer first. Um, I think a lot of times, I mean, especially even in my mind, I tend to think of prayer when it's the last resort instead of like starting. I mean, I believe that even prayer from one person can have a really powerful impact. So I can't imagine what 1,500 people doing it at once for the same thing, talking to the Lord about the same thing and asking and petitioning uh, for the same things for our school, what that would look like. As campus gets back into full swing and transitions into new leadership, a revival through prayer is exactly what this school needed. I'm Hannah in Lakewood with CCU TV. Closing event will be held on February 15th with a prayer meeting leading up to dinner at 5 p.m. These issues are so relevant to the problems facing our world today. Looking ahead to some other cherished February events, the Super Bowl is coming up. As many of you know, one year ago, the Denver Broncos dismantled, dismantled the Carolina Panthers en route to the franchise's third world championship. While the Broncos aren't in this year's 51st Super Bowl, Sunday's matchup shouldn't fail to disappoint. The Atlanta Falcons, led by all pro players, quarterback Matt Ryan and wide receiver Julio Jones, led football in most of the key offensive stats this season. They'll be looking to cap it off with the first world championship in team history. On the other side of the ball, the vaunted New England Patriots will be going for the team's fifth Super Bowl championship, all of them led by future Hall of Fame, yet controversial quarterback Tom Brady. I caught up with Patriots mega fan and fellow CCU student Christian Cronin to get his thoughts on the team's success. I like the matchup. It's going to be a hard-hitting, high-scoring game. I don't think it'll go one way or the other too quick. Uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be a good one. It's a good matchup. When asked if he still imagined the Patriots would be back in the Super Bowl after missing Tom Brady for part of the season, Christian had this to say. You know, we had four games without the greatest quarterback of all time, but the only quarterback who's better than Tom Brady is angry Tom Brady. Whatever the outcome of the games end up being, football fans should expect a great game with at least a few unforgettable moments. I'm Andrew Detmer in Lakewood, CCU TV. Maybe sports don't impress you much, but you know it should? Oklahoma! CCU Theater will be performing the iconic musical Oklahoma February 9th through the 12th. This is the musical that made musicals the American art form that it is today. You will find yourself placed into the start of the new state Oklahoma in the early 1900s. The classic love story lays out the adventures of two cowboys wrestling over a beautiful girl. The musical will be held at the Lakewood Cultural Center February 9th through the 12th and tickets are $10 for students and $15 for adults. Maybe you want to perform like in Oklahoma or show your talents. Maybe you want to host for CCU's O'Malley's Alley. They are looking for hosts. O'Malley's Alley is CCU's lip syncing competition that students can sign up for in groups or individually and you want to email madsrock at gmail.com for more details. But if you'd rather be behind the camera instead of in front then look out for the Armstrong Awards. On February 23rd, CCU will host the third annual Armstrong Awards. This cinematography event is open to all students and will feature a variety of categories, including humor, thriller, spoken word, and more. The submission deadline is February 17th for those hoping to snag an award at this year's event. Speaking of film awards, the 89th award ceremony, the Oscars, are coming up on February 26th hosted by Jimmy Kimmel. I love Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> the highlight will be La La Land, which is historically tied with 14 nominations, along with Titanic and All About Eve. Wow. And awards in sports, the CCU baseball team recently hosted its first annual banquet. January marks the start of Cougar Baseball's 2017 season. To kick off the year, the team held its first annual Around the Horn dinner to raise funds for travel and equipment expenses. Attendees received tips and tricks from Colorado Rockies pitching coach Steve Foster and radio talent Jerry Schimmel. In addition to a night of good food and speakers, players also signed personal autographs for those in attendance. CCU TV would like to wish the team the best of luck in its 2017 season and pray for safe travels and great wins. 
Go Cougars, go! I prefer softball. The softball team has welcomed a brand new head coach to the team. Shannon Hayes is from Lubbock, Texas and has agreed to picking up his life and moving it to Colorado to be the head softball coach at Colorado Christian University. The girls are so happy to have him be a part of the family. Welcome to Colorado, Coach Hayes. And in other sports news, senior Evan Verbal has been a star runner here at CCU. Emily sat him down to learn more about the man behind the quick feet. Well, double majoring is something that I encourage because, um, you know, you're getting the most out of college. And what's nice about CCU is you can double major um, in four years without feeling like you're overloaded. So the political science major, I really enjoy it. Um, and it's not quite as bulky as the business major. And I feel like both those two go really well together. So I've been able to do both and feel like I haven't had to take too many classes more than other students. Um, and then doing that while working at Centennial Institute has been great just because I've been able to live out that excitement for politics and be able to work with it, get experience in it, hear people that know so much about it. And um, just doing both of those at the same time has been really good and academically stimulating. So I came to CCU just for a lot of reasons, but one of them is that I could run here because I love running. I love racing a lot. It's just a very fun, competitive environment. Um, you know, most other schools, they have a track team and a cross-country team, and so they're getting to run and train year-round, whereas we're not able to race year-round. And so we felt really limited, and I love track and field. So um, we had, I had been told coming to CCU that we would be getting one in a few years, and we weren't seeing that process happening. And so we met with Jim McCormick, and a few of us went around. We got signatures. Um, our old coach really fought to get us a track team. Guys and girls combined, it's the biggest team on campus. There's about 50 people now that uh, compete in track and field. Last year, during track season, I was the first CCU runner um, in the track and field program uh, to ever qualify for the national championships. First guy, I guess, in all of CCU running to qualify for an NCAA national championship, which is, uh, it's different than the NCCAA, which is, I mean, it's a distinction between the regular Christian national championships and nationals so qualifying for that was really cool I was so happy to be there and to be able to represent one of the smallest division two schools out there you know among these really big schools it was really fun so. well CCU has really pushed me to try to be excellent in everything I do and that comes from you know the Bible where it says whatever you do do it all for the name of God giving strength to the or is it giving giving thanks to the Father through him thank you and CCU has really taught me to try to do that in every area of life, whatever it is, do it for God. Um, so I really had so much fun at CCU doing that. And with that being said, I'm actually not like super ready to graduate. I wish I could be in college for longer. Um, so I'm a little nervous and I'm having to trust God about what am I going to do when I get out of school. But right now, I would love to end up in Washington, D.C. as an intern this next summer. So that's the goal, and we'll see where the Lord takes me. Evan Verbal has put CCU on the map through his athletic competition and his involvement with Centennial Institute. He uses his talents to glorify God, and us Cougars are lucky to have him. I'm Emily Carl in Lakewood, Colorado. Evan Verbal is a name we definitely want to remember. Now for our full sports update. Yes, the spring sports teams have started up and are now in full swing of things. The baseball team will be playing on February 10th and 11th all the way in Claremore, Oklahoma. There will be live stats for you to follow along online. The softball girls are down in Texas getting into preseason games this past week, continuing into this upcoming week, and we'll also have live stats online. Check out the athletics webpage to keep up with them. Men's basketball will be playing the Ore Diggers at Colorado School of Mines in Golden, Colorado on February 11th at 3 p.m. Drive on over there to support your boys. Women's basketball will also be at Colorado School of Mines on February 11th playing at 1 p.m. Get over there early to catch the girls' game. That's it for our sports update this week. Stay tuned to hear more game times. Go support your Cougar athletes as they start strong in their spring season. And that's a wrap for our first episode of season five. Be sure to catch us on all social media outlets. Have a great day.